on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. 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 Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. Kimberly, tonight we know the Detroit rapper was one of three people inside that car when the shots went off. Now, when they're in that shooting, the rapper's aunt died, but he was not injured. Detroit police responded to the area of Three Mile Drive just off Mac Tuesday night on the city's east side. They were out to collect evidence of multiple bullet casings regarding the deadly shooting here. It turns out someone opened fire on a black Chrysler with three people inside. Among those inside the vehicle, Detroit rapper T Grizzly. T Grizzly rose to fame when he released his first single, First Day Out. He was nominated for an MTV and BET awards for the single. The bands they took from us, Joy Rose. Police don't know if the rapper was the intended target or not, but what's clear, his aunt, who worked as his manager, along with another young man, were all in the vehicle Tuesday night. That's when someone intentionally shot the vehicle, killing the 41-year-old manager. We don't know if anything was stolen or if this was an attempted robbery, but police say the rapper and friends were in the area to visit someone. The investigation shows when the man stepped out of their vehicle, the first of several shots filled the air. We don't know if the rapper was still inside the car when the shots went off or not. Now, T. Grizzly's music video has more than 130 million views. Again, the rapper was not injured, but unfortunately, his aunt passed away. Over the phone, T. Grizzly's family members tell us that the aunt leaves behind some children. They did not want to comment further. This is an open investigation tonight. Reporting live outside DPD headquarters, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by A.O. Conseco. All right, um, same song and dance. Welcome back to the Rap Trap. I'm Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men Too Movement. A lot of y'all act like y'all have forgot about the Men Too Movement, what it stands for, but that's just how niggas is. Um, but just as soon as you or somebody close to you get in a situation, hey, uh, you know, so you'll bring it back up and shit like that. But there's been no movement on any of those fronts. I still represent that. I'm still gonna cause awareness to that cause because it's my cause. Um, I, I have to watch my mouth because obviously it's people who donated, it's people who were really with the message, but who's gonna be continuously trying to get that word out there but me you know what I'm saying um and then when somebody comes and says oh man but my daddy just got brought up on some bullshit charges and you did actually donate and you might have shared the shit back in the fucking you know what I'm saying when the Cardi B shit popped off I'm about to do a video on the movie Hustlers and how that movie I believe is um a biopic of Cardi B's life um Katy Perry just got hit with this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's still a lot of shit going on. But, um, it is what it is, man. Niggas, niggas support what they want to support. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And this is, in hindsight, um, obviously, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who I'm talking to no more. Um, what is the rap trap? Let's start there. The rap trap is where, um, you come into, you, you work as hard as you can to get inside of this rap arena. Uh, rap arena. Argentina, rap arena. You know what I'm saying? Like ballerina, rap arena. But, um, I, just find, I thought that was funny. But, um, you work hard to get here. And then once you get here, you realize that this game is perpetuated on your pain. Um, 
Usher made a song. Uh, who was that song he made with when he said, uh, My life, you entertain me. You like it while I live in. I watch they follow. They watch they follow. It, it, it's all for your amusement. My life, your entertainment. It, it was that song. Go look that up. Um, but that's exactly what it is. Once you come into this side of it, once you become successful, we no longer see you as a human being. Now you're just whatever generalization at that time we decide rappers are. If at that time we feel like rappers are, uh, you know, during the uh, Kendrick Lamar to Pimper Butterfly stage, you know, rappers were seen one way. Uh, the Drake, Too Far Gone, rappers were seen a certain way. Um, the X, 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 and Temptation on phase, you know what I'm saying? They were seen a certain way. All rappers are fucking, you know, sentimental and shit like that. However, we want to see rappers during that time, that's how we're going to see you. But we're never going to actually. Uh, feel anything when you're going through your worst fucking moments and the reason why we see it through that lens is because we've been indoctrinated through um, in this way to where the shit on the TV isn't real but it's real as fuck you know what I'm saying it's not real but if the news come on and shit like that we believe whatever the fuck the news says um, but it's not real um, obviously in this situation right here T Grizzly, nigga was trying to kill T Grizzly, and they uh, so they shot his car, up, and it happened to be his auntie in the car, which was his manager. Um, I have so much to say about that um, on a street level, but first let's talk about the rap level. Um, if you had anything in the street going on, if you had shit rocking in the street, if you had any street beef going on while you were still in the street trying to make it into this rap shit, if you make it into the rap shit and that shit is not resolved, or if you make it and that shit is resolved, niggas will pick that shit back up like, yeah, you know, yeah, I was beat with that nigga at one time, shit nigga, he didn't want to, whatever for real. He knew what the fuck it was, you know what I'm saying? We we, we put that shit, in the, you know what I'm saying, on the back burner, but shit, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't on my part, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, because now you're their way in. You know what I'm saying? Of course, they have some niggas who want to rap and shit like that. So, this is how the fuck they get on. Um, success only, and success in the rap arena only puts, rap arena, only puts a jumbo target on your back. People not only don't see you as human anymore, but now they look at you as opposition. Niggas will say that um, this nigga in the way, you know, um, uh, this nigga ain't repping for the city right. They'll have all these gripes with you because you became successful. And these will be the real people with these fucking gripes and these trying to make a real issue, trying their best to find a reason to murder you. They're trying to find a reason for y'all to start beefing. While the internet and the, the uh, CIA agents on the internet, so you'll have a mixture of internet fans and then you'll have internet CIA agents and they'll all mix and blend in the same. So um, they'll be saying, oh, we love you, we love you. Oh, why the fuck is this fuck nigga from Detroit trying to ride your wave and shit like that? And you'll see... A CIA, agent, a CIA agent will write that, but then the real fans will pick up like, yeah, why the fuck is he hating on you and shit like that? And that's how they stir the shit up. And those CIA agents are uh, the A&Rs at the labels. They're the fucking um, desk workers at the label. Um, and they're being sent out by um, the heads of these labels because... This is what needs to happen. In, in order to stimulate an artist's career, you have to have some sense of danger there. You know what I'm saying? Y your car needs to be shot up. You know what I'm saying? And this is where, obviously, you get the whole um, blood sacrifice shit from because this is part of the rap trap. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not no spiritual, magical shit. It's just the way of a nigga. Um, in a poverty-stricken situation. Um, 
<laughs> I made a post the other day. I said, um, a lot of you nothing ass bitches need to start supporting these independent artists in your city because if they don't get on and do a fucking back to school drive for the kids, your fucking kids won't have no fucking uniforms. You go down here and you look at these fucking, um, these back to school drives that nigga gotta throw for their city because it's just so fucking poverty stricken. And you look at the motherfucker that's coming through that motherfucker. Long episode, long show. But I say that to say, you getting on can only help your surroundings. It can only help it. Now you shine the light onto this little country ass town, this butt fuck middle of nowhere town. You can be somewhere in New York. Uh, the Buffalo niggas, Griselda niggas. Niggas wasn't just getting on like that. They had to make that shit pop like that. Now, niggas look at Buffalo. But of course, other rappers in Buffalo like, yeah, them niggas cool and shit, you know, but they, they not gonna, niggas in Buffalo, you gonna find niggas in Buffalo that even though this helps the rappers in Buffalo because you, but I, I don't gotta come behind them niggas, no, them niggas, they was always doing their own thing, we did our own thing, but we ain't, we ain't on that type of shit, man. Y'all gonna find out later. It's like my nigga, everyone has flaws. Everyone has flaws. If you wanna look at a person and say, that's a flaw, I don't like that shit, I don't like that shit, that ain't cool. The fuck are we doing? We some real niggas, man. No, we some real, real niggas. And niggas will find something fucked up about that shit. With the whole Meek Mill and um, OBH beef. When, uh, behind the Drake shit. When, uh, Meek Mill was talking about, um... ARL. When he was talking about ARL, he said, man, them niggas don't do shit but get shot up, man. Fuck them niggas. And it's like... What? It'll make you think. Look, you can make anything. Like, niggas... Niggas uphold and cherish and respect... Niggas who get shot. All that Jay-Z shit, I don't respect the nigga who got shot. I respect the shooter. Dog. Niggas show you fucking bullet wounds. Oh, that nigga been out there in the field. Automatically, we think that. You know what I'm saying? But a nigga can get on stage and say, no, nah, that shit ain't gangster, man. That shit, no, nah, we do the shooting. We don't get shot. You can make anything look bad. You know what I'm saying? But it never fucking fails. It never fails. It's going to be where you're at. The place where you can make the most difference. That's going to be your fucking demise. That place is going to destroy you. And it's what happened here. And I, I've told y'all. I've spoken to the. I've spoken to the entourage. Of artists. Saying that. If you think that you safe. Because you're not the artist. You're fucking insane. I, I've stood up here. If, if that wasn't too many videos. What video was that? Hold on. I just, I said right here and said this year. To all the people in the entourage, don't think that you didn't, you know what I'm saying, you made it safely. You in just as much fucking that. Um, goons trying to whack young Miami. Kevin Gates, Fletcher. I guess that wasn't just. I must have put that show on the Big Fast Podcast. But it was an episode. But you know, we young Miami. It's like, dog, whoever the fuck you're associated with, you can easily pay the price for them. And like Body say, you'll be a fucking chapter in their book. And that's where they turn their life around and go to church and shit like that. That's the that's the big event in their life that made them. I gotta turn this shit around. But you had to die. Like fuck what you had to do with your life. Yeah, nah. I was a sacrifice. With T Grizzly. Let me speak on T Grizzly, man. 
Let me go and speak on T. Grisham. All right, there's an artist name. I'm going to go. How the fuck did that happen? Nigga, I'm closing this bitch up. How the fuck did that shit happen? But there's an artist out of Detroit named Sada Bacon. Um, Sada talked that gangster shit. Um, he didn't have, you know, little beef with niggas. And niggas talking that, that young boy shit, all that bullshit. I'm going to try to go in that direction later on, but that's, that's bullshit. His reach ain't like that. He don't got no reach like that. But I, I mean, I mean, get on there later. Um, he got with an artist named Sada Baby, which I don't really understand. Um, I would think that um, he wouldn't fuck with them because T Grizzly music. The reason uh, what was this? Uh, my moment. Uh, the reason why that shit spoke to me was he spoke about how nobody showed love when he was locked up and shit like that. And you have to respect that if you've ever been through that. If you've ever been locked up and you had niggas around you before you got locked up and then you on the phone like, shit, um, if y'all gonna do the party, press five. That was my shit. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's a whole other situation. But you'll have, you know, niggas that you're around and it'll take for you to get locked up for you to understand y'all wasn't cool like that. Whatever you thought it was, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It wasn't that deep. So then you can take it and internalize it or you can take it and let everybody know this is why I don't fuck with niggas. It's just me. I have to respect that because once you get to a stage in your life where you choose isolation, choose isolation, that shows progress, that shows evolution. Um, even though I'm sure him fucking with Sada Baby was a business move, I don't know how much of a business move that was because I just don't see Sada Baby just signing to T. Chris. T. Grizzly, it's, oh, it's obvious that Sada is older than uh, T. Grizzly. I just don't, you know, and Sada was heating up and shit like that. I don't know if they he signed to him or he just starting to hang around him and shit like that. But I just, I just didn't understand that motherfucking, and that's, and look at this shit. Like, that just happened. That he just started fucking with Sada, baby. And now, and maybe they've been fucking with each other, but now they actually putting it out there for everybody to see. Yeah, nigga. It's us. Sada was over there with F, uh, F, uh, FMV DZ. You know what I'm saying? The nigga with the missing tooth and shit like that. He had his own, uh, and Diego now. He had his own little shit going on. For him to go and fuck with T. Grizzly, it, to me it said something about Grizz. I'm going to be honest with you, dog. I'm going to be for real with you. It said something about Grizzly to me. When Grizzly came out, When Grizzly came out, dog, and then he told everybody, he told everybody, hey man, if I if I robbed you at uh uh Michigan State or whatever, like the MSU, I guess, uh hey, you no, know, I'm I'm gonna send it back to you. We got this shit now, it's all good. It's like first off, that's a weird move. It's a move. Listen now, it's a move. That as street niggas, you kind of want to do. Because everybody that you hit, you ain't really just want to hit. You was just in the street. So it's like, I had to get you, bro. I had to do it. You know what I'm saying? You're you going to do a lot of shit in the street that you regret. And a lot of us don't even get to live to regret the shit. Because we have to immediately, instant karma shit. Um, but when he did that move right there, it said like, He's trying to clear his debt in the street. He's trying to clear his space. He don't want nobody trying to run up on him. Because what he was realizing is, I got money, but I'm having to... When you come into this rap shit, from being a street nigga, and you come into this rap shit, it is a fucking total 180. It's a total 180. The things that you would hide from, if you're a real street nigga, 
with open cases and really out here, the things that you would hide from, now you have to run to. You have to be this, you know what I'm saying? And, and be in these, and as a real street nigga, you would stay in your zone, stay in your, this, I, I don't need to leave. This is what my lick said, this, you know what I'm saying? This home, you know what I'm saying? This is what this is. And that's why all I'm trying to tell all you niggas, you already under investigation. They just let you sell dope to build their case. You're not going to leave. This is your area. If you go out of bounds, you're going to get some, you out of there. You're not going and, you know what I'm saying, moving around like that. Now, that's what you have to do. You have to get comfortable being uncomfortable, meaning sleeping in hotel rooms, always on the move and shit like that. So, you don't feel safe no more. If you were still right here on, you know, on the block. Man, fuck all them niggas, man. Come get it, man. Get it in the blood, man. Because you know that you you didn't master your surroundings. Your head is on a constant swivel. You've mastered this four corner radius. You've mastered this. Ain't no sneaking up on me from here. You know what I'm saying? I know how I I know how to do this. I I, I have this shit peep the fuck out. But. When you have to move around in order for your career to keep going up, it's like, man, let me goddamn go ahead and give everybody this shit back, man, so we ain't got no more beef. You know, but it don't work like that. Like, what you took from me was more, I don't know, some niggas would drop it. But for a real solid nigga that you might have took, you can't pay me back what you took from me. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 it's lit now. It's lit. There's nothing we can do about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you tried me. I have to get back what you took from me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really, you, you put me in a situation where now I have to go and, and, and explain to niggas how what I'm going to get to you is going to be so much worse. There is no nigga breathing that got me. You know what I'm saying? They're not breathing no more. That's 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 something to say, like, cause everybody didn't been got. Before. What did you do after? Uh, what did you do afterwards? The rapper? Oh man, no, bro. He paid you back, bro. Couldn't have been me, bro. Swear to God. And you gotta think about the niggas. So it's it's in in. But the whole thing with him was he supposedly had been robbing white boys and shit like that. Um. So I, I, maybe it's a different, you know, situation. He had that one white boy come out, talking about a 50 cal, and it don't got to hit you. All he got to do is pass by your head and all that bullshit, whatever. But it seemed as if he cleared whatever debts he had in the street. Whatever debts he had in the street, it, it seemed that they were clear. I wasn't I wouldn't really following him like that to know but it, nowadays, if, it, if a, a rapper like T. Grizzly got beef with somebody, or somebody got beef with him, it's going to be televised. So you weren't really hearing nothing like that. But then him getting with Sada, of course, let's go to the first thing. That little bullshit with him and, I almost called him Soldier Boy, with a with young boy, which that shit ain't seem like shit. But I guess some niggas did. It was a shooting and shit like that. So... I guess it was serious, but I, I don't know what that shit was about. To me, that shit, to me, it seemed like the fuckers, why would y'all be beefing? You know what I'm saying? But you got an ignorant nigga right here, young boy, just, yeah, and I don't like where you, no, I don't like where you walk past me, nigga. And that's another thing. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. They're putting everybody that has, you know, Niggas who are pretty much going to jail no matter what. They're on the way to jail. We might we feel like so now the the, the men on the golf course, men and women on the golf course, and the people on the golf course are people who profit from the demise of the black man. they they feel like we're doing you a favor because you're going to prison anyway. What we're doing is giving you a little bit of shine, giving you some money before you go to prison. We're making you infamous. But you're going to prison anyway. It's they feel like it's no different than a death race. You remember death race with uh with um 
y'all know the fuck I'm talking about. Um, Jason Strand. Um, y'all ain't here for life anyway. What was that other movie? Oh, uh, well, uh, you have to control the player. That had uh, the dude from 300 in it. But you're prisoners anyway. Like, so whatever we give y'all, y'all finna, like, you're gonna die in prison. So we're gonna give you a chance to get out. If you can make it through this fucking death rate, I think I made this, um, like number four. Um, if you can make it through this fucking death race, then you get your freedom. So that's what they're giving them. If you can make it through these perils that we're going to throw in front of you, you can keep your money. But nine times out of ten, you're either going to die, go to prison, or end up broke. Proven fact. You're going to acquire so many fucking children. No, as, as I think about it, it's like we're going to open up the doors to paradise and let a whole bunch of high school dropouts, just deranged motherfuckers in here and give them weapons, more weapons than they can handle and just tell them to dodge the, you got to dodge the, the, the gladiators and you got to dodge the animals and the, the gladiators be the other rappers and the animals will be the fucking police officers. You know what I'm saying? And then deal with the trauma that it gives you mentally. So now, if the gladiators don't kill you and the fucking animals don't kill you, you'll kill your fucking self because you just can't deal with all this fucking carnage. It's too much stimulation for your mind. It's too much. You're, you're dealing with, with, I can't even call them artists. You're dealing with rappers who the only reason that they don't, the only reason that they, the reason why they freestyle is because that's all they know how to do. If you ask them to write out their lyrics, they wouldn't be able to do it. They would not be able to do the shit. And that's the ideal player, not rapper, player. At the end of the fucking day, this shit is about Puma, Nike, Bentley, just like we're just using these players as human billboards. That's it. As my OG DJ said, the brand just sits back. Hey, throw some Puma shoes on him. Throw some Reeboks on him. Throw some Felis on him. Just sit back. Hey, you want to Promote Brandy? You want to promote... I said Brandy. You want to promote Hennessy? You want to promote fucking... You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, champion? There you go. Just throw this shit down in the pit and just watch what happens. But no matter what, it's like race cars. Fuck what happens to the goddamn race car. It's the brand. It's all about the fucking brand. Players will come in and out this bitch. In and out. The only thing that stays consistent is the fucking brand. And you're going to put your life on the line for this because we've checked. Your story is you came from nothing. So you don't know what the fuck to do with this. You're going to buy the house. You're going to buy the cars. You're going to get the girls pregnant. I give you... Two years, five years max. You'll be pawning all this shit. Then again, none of this means anything. You don't have, you're not, because in this store, you have no, and then you people don't work together for shit. So any brand that you put together is going to fall apart. Partly because we own all of the big distribution companies, so... We can shut you down at any time. So we're just putting you in this cage. You're already in a cage, but we're putting you in a smaller cage. And just throwing fucking... But in this smaller cage, it's all everything that you ever want. All the money, all the guns, all the girls. And you have to use your own self-control to... Say, I'm not going to fuck up... Um, 
raw. I'm not gonna do too much dope. I'm not gonna walk around with this gun every day just so I can feel like I'm a gangster. This is far this 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 theory is far more important than because one thing that will continue to stand is the brand. This will not be the because you aren't lit. This what what I've taken from this whole thing is that you motherfuckers are not listening. For those of you who are, I give you the props. I I, I put you up on my Instagram for all the artists who listen to me, and then. Do those things that are, are going to keep them alive and the people around them alive. Because as far as this shit goes, dog, I would not doubt that these people have infiltrated your entourage as far as now you have to go do something. What is T. Grizzly going to do after his auntie was just murdered because they thought it was him? What do you do now? His auntie was his manager. And that it is 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 such a sad thing. It says it's like at the end of the day, if you know that in our hometown niggas don't allow niggas to have shit for long. Any nigga that was even somewhat successful in Detroit, in Miami, in Mobile, in fucking, you know, Ohio, in New York, in Brooklyn, any nigga that was successful through music, gangster music, they were killed in their own look. Everybody can see it, not just the men. The women can also see that. If you'll take the risk, and who the fuck, somebody just did this shit. Well, YG, YG, his uh his people jumped in his car and uh, went in his SUVs and had a shootout with the fucking police and shit like that. This shit goes far wider than just the artist, as you can see with 6 9 This shit decimates, this is... Not a bullet. This is a bomb. There's going to be shrapnel. There's going to be the blast. People are going to get hurt. If you're putting out a message, whatever your message is, you will live and become that message. If it's gangster, gangster, murder, murder, kill, kill, you better get somewhere where that, like, you need to, nigga, sell the fuck out, go to fucking Calabasas. Sell the fuck out, go to Calabasas, somewhere, go to goddamn, you know, uh, uh, Point Clear, and get the fuck, you can't talk that gangster shit and be in a gangster area. That makes it too hard to, to see who the fuck did what. We won't know what happened then, because nigga, it's, it's, Every time you go outside, and this is, have we not seen this enough? Because it's, it's on you to know what the fuck is going on around, like you know where the fuck you come from. And that's why I salute niggas like Psych G. Niggas who come from, you know, up north and shit like that, but will come down south and, and will work their music and shit like that. It, I think that, and then have good fucking music. Like, if you gon', if you feel like this is why I can fuck with this type of person, if you know that your music is that shit and it's gonna do something and you really believe in yourself and you truly confident, dog, go ahead and get the fuck. I think Site G went from like DC to Virginia some shit like that. Like, and just, fuck it. Fuck it. And it takes a lot of mental maturity to know, like, this shit ain't gonna work the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I asked, like, I said, um, like, what you, like, what you, 
gonna do in your video like when you want a whole bunch of niggas in the background because when you do leave your city and come to another city and shit like that now you kind of leave your videos open now you don't got that many niggas behind you and shit like that but like i say though if you you can let your fucking music speak let your fucking music speak you know what i'm saying but as far as just near yeah, me, I'm, I'm that nigga, bro. I don't give a fuck by that and shit, my nigga. Fuck you think this is, and I'm staying right here. I'm a real nigga, bro. I ain't going no fucking way, bro. I ain't no nigga gonna run me off, my nigga. If I got a million dollars, I ain't got no motherfucking money. I'm gonna stay right the fuck here, nigga. I wish a fuck nigga would try me. Them nigga know what the fuck is, nigga. I'm gonna stay right here. Whatever happened, happened. How the fuck can we feel sorry? Have we not seen this enough? That every rapper is in danger of being murdered? Everyone that is on that artist's team is liable to get fucking murdered in the street. And we're liable not to find who the killer is. Because it's a known fact that a nigga will find a million and one reasons to kill you no matter what the fuck you trying to do as long as you're successful a nigga will find a million and one reasons to kill you and the people who have reasons why they shouldn't their voices won't even be heard the person that could save your life that could have saved, that could have told the nigga, man, no, nah, we ain't doing that. We need to make sure that's him in that car. Let, let the motherfucker go to the gas station. Man, fuck that, nigga. Fuck kind of shit. And it goes right back to that, that car. Like, fuck that shit, Sharif. That's real fucking life. But here's my thing. As long as we're going to play with it and, and you niggas just feel like, fuck that shit. Fuck, like, nigga, fuck that shit, nigga. Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody gonna fuck with us, nigga. We stick the fuck up, nigga. We sticked up, nigga. Ain't nobody know I want that fucking problem with us, nigga. We get it. Any nigga, bro. Hey, mama, anybody, bro. We'll take kids out of everything, nigga. We'll... And what's so crazy about that is when somebody, a child, get hit. Oh, why the fuck they are? A child was murdered last night on 8th Street and 3rd. And it's like... And that's when the fuck you get testified on by your getaway driver. It's like, what the fuck? Like, can we not see that we're on both sides of this fucking gun? Can we not see we're on both sides of this gun? But yet, here we go. Ayo say, let's do a 30-day crime fast. A 30-day crime fast. Fuck that shit. So when shit like this happen... All I'm doing with you is reviewing. We're just reviewing. We're just reviewing. Because obviously, you niggas believe that this shit is a fucking game. You're thinking like the fucking CIA is thinking. This rap trap is just a fucking, it's just entertainment. So because you choose to play the fuck around and be careless... And not understand that you are inside of a rap trap. As soon as you became that star and money was no longer a problem, you gained 20 problems for every dollar that you have. And you can't pay all of them off. I'll say this again to the members of any team of an artist that is gangster, gangster, murder, murder, kill, kill. You can play that retarded ass game like, no, he don't say, he ain't with that murder, murder, kill, kill. If he says something about guns in his music, if he says something about dope, selling dope, shooting guns, ops, if that's part of his lexicon, you can either I've said this before. You can either get the fuck around him and say that my life is more valuable than this money that, I, because pretty much most of you motherfuckers on niggas' team is just that to smoke the weed up and have your hand out. They give you these bullshit ass jobs. Like, yeah, you my, 
you my goddamn bag or you know, just so you'll be on the team. But really all y'all doing is smoking together, doing drugs together and shit. You're not doing a motherfucking thing with your life but just crabbing the fuck. When you have an artist that's blown, you don't keep a, you know, like, pretty much the, the shows, like, the, your manager is pretty much your assistant. All right, just answer the phone call, wherever they want me to go, tell them the price, I'm over here smoking. It's not a hard job to do. Like, the, the, the label pretty much tells you, fuck, you make anybody your fucking manager. And then that's when you get the whole, uh, had to get me another manager, you know, we had to take it to the next level and all that. That, that young uh, wife and Lucia shit um, going from fucking uh, T.I.G. to fucking I think it was the Warner Brothers um, because it's time to elevate when you get tired of just smoking with your fucking manager and shit like that and just having a motherfucker answer the phone because you just want to be yeah and I'm up nigga I, I ain't got to answer my phone talk to my manager but the whole time it's your fucking auntie while still in the fucking trenches of one of the dangerous, most dangerous cities in America right now. Everybody car is getting shot up right now. Everybody, at the very least, you can bulletproof your shit. If you're a rapper and your shit is not bulletproof in 2019, you ask it for whatever happened. Whatever happens, you're asking for it. You have enemies. If you write, if you still in your city, if you still reside in the city that you came from, that you swear to God it is so gangs, I come for a nigga, kill your mama and your daughter, and you don't give a fuck. Smile in your face at the motherfucking funeral. I just made that up too. But if you come from them places and you really mean that shit and you'll go and live there, whatever come to you, it's on, I mean, it's just, and the, the, the fucked up part about it is, these labels treat you motherfuckers like cars. They'll have insurance on you. At this point in time, um, once again, I, I ask the rappers and the streets, if we can go on a 30 day crime fast for 30 days, no crime, so that we can turn around the stereotype and stigma that is upon us black men. Even though we have, we know what the um, domestic um, terrorists look like in 2019, but that doesn't change a fucking thing. It don't change shit. Because you'll have somebody in Philadelphia and, and that shit will look crazy. Then you'll see. So it's just I'm I'm proposing a 30 day crime fast. Um, maybe one of you big artists can pick it up and pass the message around. Um, but if not, and it ain't no problem. Don't expect for anybody to feel sorry for you when your family gets dead to dirt. T. Grizzle was not promoting the 30 day crime fast. Niggas is too gangster. Fuck that shit, nigga. We stick the fuck up, nigga. Sticks don't stop bullets. And don't shit stop karma. Do what you're gonna do, man. Um, it's been a rap trap. Make sure you go to the Patreon. Um, make sure you show love to the Patreon. Um, that's where all the videos gonna be at. If y'all haven't seen the three ways to identify a nab, if you haven't seen the uh, Scotty Pippen video, if you haven't seen the Suki Hana, the Cardi, this it's a whole bunch of show that is not on YouTube. Get the fuck over there um, and handle business. Make sure you hit that PayPal or that Cash App. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love, love.